Hello and welcome to the show. Thank you for your view. I appreciate you. Today I'm going to show you how to make moonshine in the new moonshine update. A lot of people have been asking for a tutorial on how to, some explanations. It can be a little bit complicated. First thing you need to do though, after you get your shack, head over to your moonshine table. You're going to need to start a run and you can see that it wants $50 for your mash. But there's a way to bring that price down. That way is pretty basic, pretty straightforward. It's just running a bootlegger mission. And you get that bootlegger mission from Maggie Fike on the main level of the Moonshine Shack. She's in the living room area here. You'll be able to run these Moonshine missions every 12 minutes, I believe it is. And it's 12 minutes from when you ended the last mission, I believe, not 12 minutes from when you started the last mission. So after you finish a mission, set a 12-minute timer. You should be able to come back and talk to her and get another one after that 12 minutes. And each one of these missions, if completed properly, will reduce the cost of your mash by $20. And why I said if completed properly is because there are some missions where you have to go in while in stealth and poison a still. If you alert those enemies during that mission and end up having to destroy the still, then instead of a $20 reduction, you will only get a $10 reduction on your mash. The lowest you can get is a $10 cost on your mash. So if you complete two bootlegger missions successfully, then you'll get $20 off for each mission, bringing your mash cost down from $50 to $10. You can see now my mash price is $30 after I completed one mission. So I'm going to wait 12 minutes and then I'm going to go run another mission. Now, I could have just paid the money, but for demonstration purposes, I'm actually I'm running these missions in order to get the cost down. I'm even going to run a third mission to demonstrate that running the third mission won't reduce the mass, MASH cost below $10. It's fixed at $10 is the very minimum that you're going to have to pay. Now... If you're not level 20 yet, doing those bootlegger missions is hands down a must. You know, you're going to get XP for doing them as well. But once you are level 20, you might want to spend that time working on doing some hunting for your trader, maybe running some bounties and earning some gold. And it is still a good thing to run the bootlegger missions because if you consider the amount of time it takes to run a bootlegger mission, for instance, you might be able to get a bootlegger mission done in three to five minutes. Okay, so let's say on the long side, you're doing it in five minutes and you're making $20 in that five minutes. Realistically, that is an earning rate of $240 an hour. If you got it done in three minutes, then that's an earning rate of $400 an hour. So that three to five minutes that it takes you to run a bootleg mission is worth doing it. Because if you go run a bounty mission, then you know it's going to take you 10 to 20 minutes usually to run a bounty mission. And you're still going to get good pay, but you're going to get gold on the bounty mission. So like it's worth doing the bootlegger missions. I'm not saying don't do them, but at the same time, it's worth doing other things too. If, you, if you're already level 20 and you don't need the bootlegger XP, you could go run bounty missions instead and get a return from your bounty mission and apply that towards your mash. And it's not really much different than running the bootlegger mission itself. So that being said, while I'm out running my missions, I'm on the second mission right now, I'll often pick up animals, fill my satchel, like birds and whatnot. Any, the three star, or I'm sorry, not, it doesn't have to be three star. The birds that drop three feathers now can be very valuable. Load your satchel up with them while you're out running moonshine missions. And then when you get to camp, give it to Crips for materials. I like my camp set up, or my moonshine shack set up in tall trees because there's cougars around, there are some good bird spawns, there's elk, deer, ram, pronghorn, bison, all over in the Great Plains, which I like to put my camp in Great Plains, my shack in tall trees, and you know, it's a personal thing. Okay, now you can see here, my mash price is down to $10. I've successfully completed two bootlegger missions, I'm now at the minimum of $10, but I'm still not going to start it. Ideally, you would start it here. Like, I recommend you start it here. Don't wait. Like, you're ready to go. Mash, fire it up. 
but I'm going to spend another 12 minutes, like I said, just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to do another one and show that you can't get MASH for free. You're going to have to spend at least $10 on it. And I want to bring up some points. When you're out doing your missions for bootlegging, for deliveries, all for Moonshiner, make sure you loot the enemies, guys. Those enemies drop a lot of the ingredients that you're going to need in order to make your flavorings. They'll drop you canned vegetable, I'm sorry, canned fruits. You know, you'll get canned strawberries, canned peaches, canned apricots. They actually drop produce, pears, apples, peaches. You can get treasure maps. You'll get off the revenuers, uh, antique liquor bottles, which one of those antique liquor bottles is used even for making the three-star flavoring. And what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to run my third bootlegger mission, which is going to demonstrate that I won't be able to get my mash price down below $10. We already saw that it's at $10. After this mission, it's not going to drop below $10. It's going to stay the same. So effectively, I'm just wasting my time running this bootleg mission at this point because I'm already level 20. I'm not going to get any Moonshiner XP. All I get is just a little bit of regular XP for it which I could get just about anywhere. So I'm going to come down to my still now. You can see the mash is still $10. It doesn't matter if you're making weak, average, or strong. It's $10 across the board. It says it's going to take 48 minutes to produce. So when you start your mash, take note of what time it is. Do a little bit of math. Take note of what time it's going to end. And then come in to your flavoring. And this is an important aspect here because in order to get maximum price for your delivery you have to have a buyer that's interested and you can see the buyers reset in one hour and 22 minutes now right now I'm okay I can go ahead and flavor it because I know my moonshine will be ready in 48 minutes so I'm still gonna have 34 minutes after it's ready to make a delivery to one of these buyers but if for instance it only said like 30 minutes then that's a problem because my buy orders will expire after my moonshine's ready. So instead of flavoring it now, I would come back in 30 minutes and flavor it according to one of the new orders that have been presented to me. But they don't all have buyers. Like this one here, Berry Mint Moonshine, there's no buyer for it. If I make that and I don't have a buyer, I'll have to settle for getting like half price on it. I won't get the full amount. Um, there's no buyer for Spiced Island Moonshine either. Even though it says that value, without a buyer listed, it won't... See, like, if I go to buyers, I show buyer there. Just come down, it's just, just recipe. I, like, I can't... There's no buyer for this one. There's no option to turn buyers on. Um, and the, the buyers reset in one hour and 21 minutes. You can see that at the bottom, where it says one hour is 21 minutes. So, I know my Moonshine will be done in 48 minutes. So it will be safe to go off of today's requests and flavor one of these flavors. And in 48 minutes, I'll be able to make a delivery still with, you know, 32 minutes left before buyers reset. So I like to pick the berry cobbler. Okay, and that's because I can buy canned peaches and peaches out of the catalog very easily without carrying... You know, like, so what? It cost me, like, $2, 250 per recipe to order those supplies. And I only have to then go out and pick one thing. And that's raspberries. And they can be picked incredibly easy in the Heartland oil field area, Heartland overflow area. There's freaking raspberries everywhere in this wide open area. So you can find them super, super easy. Like, I think this here is honestly... Like the best recipe in the game. If you have a buyer for it, go for the Berry Cobbler Moonshine. Now we have to wait. The flavoring is going to take 12 minutes. Okay, so if we had to wait, say when we go into flavoring, say it said buyers reset in 30 minutes, for instance. Let's say that. And we know it takes 48 minutes for our moonshine be produced then we would know that these flavors would reset or these buyers would reset before 
the moonshine was produced. So what we would do is instead of flavoring right now, we would wait until the buyer is reset. And then in 30 minutes when the buyer is reset, before the moonshine ends, if the moonshine finishes production before you flavor it, you will not be able to flavor it after that. So you need to flavor it before it ends. And when you do, then it will take 12 minutes to flavor. So let's, okay, let's say we pushed it. We, we didn't flavor it until 40 minutes in. So it had eight minutes to go still. You flavor it, then it's going to still take you 12, another 12, you know, 12 minutes from when you flavor it before it's actually going to be over with. And that's, that's how you want to do that. You want to just make sure you have a buyer lined up and that you're flavoring it at the right time. And that's, that's pretty much it. That's pretty basic. So then now in, you know, 48 minutes time, I'll be able to come here and I'll be able to get my 20 bottles of moonshine and go make a delivery. In the meantime, I can go speak with Maggie Fife again and go do some bootleg missions. But I have to wait, you know, the 12 minutes or however long it is since my last bootleg, which I just ran, in order to run this next one. And you can see there she won't give it to me yet so I'm gonna come down to the bar I'm gonna waste a little time down here just let the time tick away I wish it would give us an alert notify us when an NPC had a mission ready for us again you know, like even the stranger missions and I know you can look on the map and see if they're available again but it sure would be nice to get a notification to pop up and tell me like Maggie's got another job for you instead of having to set a timer and go look you know physically to see if that's a possibility or not so what I do I just set a timer because setting a timer to me is just easier than I just do it that way or I'll record it somehow like in a notepad on my desktop I don't actually write it down and then try and you know get back to her as soon as I can sometimes I'm a little early like you can see right now it's grayed out she's not offering me the mission yet but she's about to because I know the time. I set to see it just lit up. So here I am. I set my timer. I knew that it was about to light up. That makes it most efficient if you know the times. And then I'm going to head out. I'm going to do another bootleg mission. Now, you might say, like, well, how? what's good as a bootleg mission while I have shine brewing? Because, you know, there's no mash there. You know, I've already used the mash. But it saves it. If you do bootleg missions while your still is in production then the bootleg missions that you're running will apply towards your next purchase of mash so over this 48 minute period where i'm making my strong moonshine if i run two successful bootleg missions then that will take the 40 dollars off of my next mash purchase will only have to be 10 dollars. and since we know they're 12 minutes apart that should be really easy to do to fit two bootleg missions in over a 48 minute period and in between those bootleg missions you can you know run some supply mission for your camp run a delivery go do some hunting to fill your materials up go do a bounty mission go pick up some collectibles go dance in your saloon in your speakeasy whatever you want to do you know the world is yours at that point you got some time, your still's cooking, things are good, you're making money, you keep your camp going, and you're still going, and you're making, you know, well over $300 an hour if you have camp and you're still going. Probably closer to $400 an hour, or like, like $350. Okay, like, look, let's look at earnings per hour right now. You saw that I'm getting $226 for my moonshine delivery and it cost me ten dollars to put in so i'm getting 216 dollars and that's a 48 minute process and then let's let's just call it an even hour though because after the 48 minutes i have to make a delivery and then after the delivery i have to get back to the moonshine shack and then not always will i even be able to get it done in 48 minutes sometimes i'm going to have to flavor like the last five minutes and it's going to push it over 48 minutes while i'm waiting for the flavoring to be done so let's just call it an even hour for a run we're making 216 dollars in an hour off of a moonshine run if you 
complement if you add that to trader where let's say you're doing a delivery every four hours making five hundred dollars which is hundred and twenty five dollars an hour then 216 compared to 125 you can see clearly that bootlegger is a higher return than trader but combining the two together is your best return of all that's going to put you at about three hundred and forty dollars an hour in earnings by keeping both your trader and your moonshine still in production just you know going hard on it and that's not too shabby three hundred and forty dollars an hour kind of passive income and while you're going along the way picking collectibles up run some bounty missions it just adds to those earnings per hour I could see you know a good potential of around four hundred dollars an hour I really could somewhere in that field you know when you start adding in collectibles and bounty hunter missions and now the 48 minutes has passed my stills ready I've even ran two bootleg missions so when I start up my next batch it's only going to cost me ten dollars for my mash so let's go let's get it now see Bert Higgins is who I would have to sell to if I didn't have a buyer lined up so my $226 order or sale I would only end up getting $144 for but because I know I timed it right I know I have a buyer for full price at $226 so I'm gonna start it up I got 33 minutes to get in and get this now it doesn't say like if 33 minutes passes there might be another order for Barry Cobbler but there might not too you know what I mean like it's 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 risky and at this point you can't reflavor it it's stuck it's stuck what it is there's no choice to go back and reflavor it so you're either delivering it or it's just sitting here holding your still up so let's deliver it and you're gonna see here that the game is going to bug out on me sometimes you get this infinite load screen after you start a delivery or a bootleg mission which you're gonna to have to close the game and start it back up a lot of times you lose all of your moonshine this time it was really weird because my moonshine I didn't lose it but it lost flavoring which this is the first time this has happened to me other times I've come in and I didn't lose anything the moonshine was still sitting there waiting to be delivered this is really weird though it says 0 of 20 bottles unflavored I don't understand what's going on at this point I'm like whatever if I can make a delivery I'll take it I'll take hundred and three dollars it's better than nothing you know I thought I might have to log back in and just start from scratch you know buy some more mash go from there but fortunately it lets me start a mission delivering zero of 20 for hundred and three dollars of unflavored moonshine so I'm gonna make that delivery it's not what I made I should have ended up with $226 here, not $103. Rockstar needs to fix this problem. I didn't edit it out or anything because I wanted to demonstrate it for you guys. Um, I didn't really want it to happen to me. I wanted to have a clean run here. But when it did, I thought, well, you know what? It's a good thing to show because it's something I can discuss in the video. I can prepare you for it. So if you get to that point and you end up losing your moonshine, then it's not going to be a surprise to you. And then what? Okay, we're on a delivery here. Now you can see that my, on my radar it's red. Now I made a mistake here. I should have held back, not brought my wagon up this close. I got lucky though. Sometimes the revenuers will let you through without harassing you. And this happens to be one of those times. But ideally what you want to do is before you get too close to them and trigger their interaction with you stop your wagon get off the wagon go up and kill them all and once you kill them all you'll be able to get back on your wagon and proceed usually unmolested however sometimes a couple more will still spawn on horseback and chase after you so be prepared to deal with that and when you're driving your wagon if you notice I'm looking down sights on my gun when you're on the road just get the wagon going and look down sights on your gun and it will take over it will auto steer it will keep your speed going and that allows you to look around 
and fire your gun, shoot any enemies that come around. You can quick release on the left trigger, the look down sights, in order to enable the aim assist to lock onto stuff. And the wagon will keep driving down the road at a set speed that you set. And you can see here, I've completed the mission. And another thing to keep in mind is those bottles in the wagon are precious. They will break. You have to stay on the road. If you go off road, your wagon will take damage and you will lose money at the end of your delivery. So now we finished up on the delivery. We're coming back to our still. And we're going to look here. Our mash now is $10. And that's because we ran the two bootleg missions while it was in production last time. Now see what kind of is messed up here is you have no way of knowing at this point how long until your orders expire. Like you're not getting told anything about flavoring right now at this point. Like you don't know the duration for your buyer orders in order to make sure that you're picking one that will work for you in one of these spots. You know, like if your buyer order expires in 48 minutes, for instance, and you click on 48 minutes, there's no way for you to ensure that you're good to go. There's just none. Because no matter what flavor you pick before that 48 minutes, it might not be good after. And after the 48 minutes when it's completed, it's too late to flavor it. So there is a little bit of a flaw in the system in that regard. Is Unless you record it from your last run before, when I was able to look at it before, I could have recorded it and then I would know right now how long there would be. But since I haven't been in there uh, and I didn't record it, I, I don't know right now. So I'm kind of just like up in the air right now picking one of these. Mm, this will put now let's go in and look at the times for flavoring. See, now it says 20 minutes, 30 seconds. So now I'm going to wait 20 minutes and 30 seconds before I flavor. And that way I can ensure that I will have a buyer available. So after 20 minutes and 30 seconds, I'll come back and I'll look at today's requests. And it will show me the menu here of the people that have an order in for that flavor. I'll pick that flavor. And then 48 minutes later, I still will be ready for me to make another delivery. That's just how it works. It's pretty simple.